Effective sanitation policies and strategies are important to ensure unimpeded access to improved sanitation services. In Ghana, the need for effective policies and strategies was recognized in the 1990s, and a good number have been published since. The central aim of all sanitation policies and strategies is to ensure sustainable and uniform implementation across the country. Today, we are going to talk about solid waste management in Ghana and the policies that support their implementation in Ghana. When we return after the break, you meet my panel. Welcome back to Trash Talk. Today we are going to talk about solid waste management and the policies that surround them in Ghana. I have with me three people, one via Zoom and two in studio with me. I'm going to start with the lady, Mrs. Janet um, Arthur from the Netherlands Embassy. Mm. She's also had an experience in the watch space, water, sanitation and hygiene um, space, and she knows issues about policy. And now she's with the development partners to bring a full um, spectrum of experience to bear today. And then I have with me Engineer Salifu, Lukman Salifu, very well known in the area of consultancy with development um, with the ministries and um, with water and sanitation, with hygiene, with policy. You are welcome. Thank you. Yes. We also have online um, Mr. Mr. Tony, Mr. Tony Mensah, he's um, retired from the Ministry of Sanitation, but he's also a very experienced gentleman, and we are privileged to have you all in studio with us today. I want to, first of all, ask um, lady and gentlemen to introduce the various organizations you work with and what your mandates are. I'll start with um, Mrs. Arthur. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Janet Arthur, and I'm a policy officer for water and sanitation at the Netherlands Embassy. I also focus on circular economy and climate issues. I'm a focal person there. So uh, the Netherlands Embassy since 2012 has had a big uh, water, sanitation and hygiene program and it's uh, going to end this year. Okay. Yeah, and within that we've had water, water that's drinking water access, sanitation, that's with the toilets and all that, and waste management. And within these uh, profiles, we ensure sustainability. So uh, we dive into market-based approaches to work and also uh, access to finance in our work. Okay. Uh, focus also lies within circularity in the space, circularity and also climate action. So solid waste, we mitigate uh, climate and also look at adaptation practices as well. Janelle, tell us a bit about um, Waste Care Associates and what you've done over the years. Well, Waste Care Associates, we basically provide analytical and advisory services in environmental sanitation. We do policy work, we do planning, we do strategic uh, setting, and then we do design. Um, construction supervision, yeah. you know, the whole chain of services in environmental sanitation we do, supporting ministries, MDAs, ministry department uh, agencies, the metropolitan municipal district assemblies, and then development partners, of course. So we do work from top to bottom. We do yeah. policy, we do planning, and we do actual work. Yes. I would want to always dirty our hands because that is where I started from. I mean, I, I like the mix of your experience because you are not only at the policy level, you go all the way to implementation and I'm sure you have a better eye view of where the gaps are. When did we as a country realize, come to this awakening that our sanitation or environmental sanitation issues in Ghana have become alarming? Mr. Mr. Uh, Salif. Well, I, <laughs> I would say that um, if we look at the interventions that we embarked on, um, for example, the 
first World Bank project on environment, urban environmental sanitation, focusing on the five largest cities, you know, brought to the fore the fact that we needed to improve solid waste management because we were doing it. At that time, it was mainly public. There was always problems with, you know, collection, efficiency. Uh, disposal was a problem. We didn't have any sort of improved landfill or disposal site available. And so you see that government then intervened from 1996 all the way through 2005. The first phase of urban environmental sanitation project and doing a second phase just mm -hmm. to deepen some of the you know, um, interventions that have been done. So I would say that from that time onwards, the, the, the awakening was there. But of course, with population explosion, one would expect that the, and then there's also change in the waste streams themselves. Yes. You know, if plastics peak in our waste stream like we're having now, yes. then we all of a sudden going to see uh, a lot of plastics and then the problems that the plastics also bring, you know, i.e. flooding because yes. it chokes our drains, it chokes everywhere, the littering becomes rampant. And so you see that over time is increasing. You know, so that is the perspective I can bring, bring to it. I would say from the mid-90s coming when government decided that they were intervene, you know. That is when we did the first policy in 1999, right, for example, yes. mm -hmm. because then we were beginning to see we don't even have a policy to guide us. What do we do? You know, so those are the, you know, things. But in a nutshell, that's what I would say. Thank you very much. I won't go online. Uh, Mr. Mr. Mensa, um, hello, if you are there... Hello, Mr. Mensa. Mr. Yeah, Tony Mensa, yes. yes. You are welcome to yeah, Trash Talk. Me. Yes. You are welcome to Trash Thank Talk. Thank you very much. Yes. We want, much, we, much. We, we want to talk about when we came, we came to this overwhelming awakening that um, Ghana needs some kind of intervention in our environmental sanitation space in terms of policy. Uh, um, initially, the problem wasn't so alarming. And therefore, the municipalities themselves were handling the various areas. That is, the various municipalities, the assemblies themselves were delivering direct services. But in the course of time, our population began to explode. Then the assignment becomes, became so alarming, and the assemblies became overwhelmed. There was therefore the need to introduce a strategy that will enable the assemblies to handle the problem. So as Mr. Lukman said, the first major intervention was embarked on with funding from the World Bank, where the five major cities in Ghana, at that time, Accra, Kumasi, Sekandita Prade, um, Tema, and then Tamale. These were the five cities that benefited from that intervention and it went quite all right. There were direct intervention like um, construction of landfill facility, and then also direct intervention in terms of the waste collection services. Then there was the second phase, which um, sought to extend what had been done initially. And during that time, the as municipalities that could not finish their landfill facilities had their fair share. And then those that had started earlier on but couldn't finish also had their fair share. And it was highly successful. So that was when it was realized that waste management needs to be handled effectively to ensure that our cities become um, clean. Okay. Because waste is also associated with health issues. And therefore, to improve the health status of the populace, there was a need to embark on an effective waste management programs so that uh, people become relieved of these um, numerous health incidents. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mensah. I'll move now to Mrs. Um, Mrs. Arthur. When did the development partners prioritize environmental sanitation issues? I know that they all come from different backgrounds with different agenda. But it seems in the last maybe seven to 10 years, we can see that the green space is being trumpeted a lot. When did this 
awakening come in? Um, usually, development partners work in line with government's priorities. So uh, once these things have become on top of the priority for the government, we support them. So we first of all start with baselines to see the courses, root courses, and uh, preempt uh, what activities we should embark on to support the government uh, curb the sanitation issues. So like um, Mr. Anthony Mensa mentioned and also uh, Prof. Engineer Lukman said, government prioritized within the 90s. So you see in the sanitation policy itself, uh, gov development uh, partners supported it in the production of the policy itself. So you see interesting topics like materials in transition, which equally it's a secular economy in quotes. Yes. It's just a, a theme or a concept that is being used. And it's under review now with um, actions that have been tested by uh, development partners supporting governments all through municipalities to uh, curb this issue. Can we um, look at the National Solid Waste Management Strategy um, for Ghana 2020? And which areas, sorry, in which areas um, the, the policy or the strategy focuses on? Mr. Mr. Mensa. Yes. yes, Madam, thank you. Yes, um, in waste management, we have various segments. So the strategy, actually focused on the entire space, but then clearly defined so that you know which area or aspect you are dealing with at a particular time. So it looks at, it looks at the waste generation, and then also it looks at the, the various steps. For example, the generation and collection, then, Transportation is also there. Then the treatment and disposal is also there. Okay. Then the very important aspect, which is um, and should, dealing with the waste as a treating waste as a material, but not to just dispose of it, so that um, you minimize the waste that ends up at the land process, for instance. And then also the various aspects of waste treatment and disposal systems that are available, and then advising which ones are more effective and which one uh, those are supposed to be um, followed, okay. or the, those to be um, employed to ensure that we have effective waste management system okay. in, in our respective municipalities. Thank you, Mr. Mensah. Um, and also, very importantly, the financing aspect of it. Yes. That's right. So, because you need funds to be able to ensure effective waste collection. Where is the fund supposed to come from? Is it from the beneficiaries, that the individuals, or the population? Or it should come from a government? Or it should come from development partners? So, all the various aspects are tackled as far as the document is concerned. Okay. Thank you. I'll move to um, Engineer Salifu. Um, so far, with the policies that we've promulgated so far, how will you classify or categorize uh, performance? In the last five years, let's just even put it in the last five years, how have we done in terms of implementation? Well, I would say that um, policy you know, implementation, as we said, what is policy implementation? We yes. started by having a policy. We revised the policy. It dawned on us that, look, a policy needs legs. That is why we did the strategy. So yes. you cannot isolate policy implementation from the strategy because yes. what we're saying is that we had a policy. We then looked at the policy to do strategies. Yes. So have the strategies worked? Have we been able to make it achieve what we set out to? You know, putting aside finance, which I would say everybody will say, that is what we need to do. And we said, look, fine. We also did the investment plan. Okay, so let me give you what we said. Yes. Let's do a policy. Policy needs legs, yes. so let's do a strategy. Yes. So, but you need energy to work. So exactly. the energy to make the strategy work is the cash. Exactly. But I'm saying that beyond all that, we're not getting results as we should because we've not 
define the team that will let all the populists come on board. Okay. okay. Well, can you can you explain a little bit of that? Well, I saw. How your, are we to get? I saw. On board? I saw your synopsis, and you're talking <laughs> about Rwanda being the cleanest. Yes. Let me tell you. The first time I went to Rwanda was in 1999. Mm. Well, we went to Rwanda in 1999. In Ghana, we have done franchise management, where we had said that we should let private come in, give a franchise to a private entity, let them do the whole hog of work, including providing services and then collecting. Yes. Because we wanted to seal any leakages. If you collecting money yourself, then you do a better job. Could that have been because government did not have the capacity to do that, to do collection and all of that? I mean, that is another whole discussion about, <laughs> I want to get to that central yes. point you okay. asked about. What do all we right. do to get the, them? So when we went to Rwanda, Rwanda. to cut it yes. short, we just said, look, in Ghana we're doing franchising. Why don't we do it in Rwanda? Okay. Now, interestingly, I met uh, a lady from France who said, look, let's go for big contracting. I said, no, let's do franchising. Luckily, at that time, those in charge, Minister of Local Government, they decided that no, because they wanted to do youth employment, they would rather go for franchising because okay. then you will give it to youth groups and stuff. Mm -hmm. But that is not the thing. When they, they looked back in their own system, what they call the uh, Bumaganda, Mbumaganda is bringing communities, people together to solve specific themes, social problems, yeah. social problems yeah, that yeah. confront them. So you see, they take what we have done here and they weave their own traditional systems that yes. work for them to it. So you define a theme. So that theme is what has driven it. Okay, so do we have the same thing? Yes, we said we'll do National Environmental Sanitation Day. So we started it, and then we found out that, oh, there are complaints. People yes. have misused water resources for environmental sanitation and all that. And then we abandoned it. Mm -hmm. But, come on, what the Rwandese did in 1962, in pre-colonial times, is a traditional thing. Like, we have Nobwa here. Yes, yes. Okay? Mm -hmm. The same traditional theme that they used to mobilize people was used neg negatively during the genocide. Yes. Did they abandon it? No. In 2009, they reintroduced it, refashioned it, and see how we can use it positively. Yes. Unfortunately for us, we say Environmental Sanitation Day to rally the communities and the people, oh, there's something wrong, so we jettison it. That's wrong. We need to, you know, find a theme that we can use. And we've done it before. But is that... Um, yes, we've may, we may have abandoned it, mm -hmm. but could we even sustain it when in an entire 360-something days in a year, mm -hmm. you choose only one day to sort of um, celebrate the efforts of community others? In Nobwa, as you mentioned earlier, in Nobwa was... Uh, a cultural thing that sort of was inbuilt. Yes. Where there's, um, there's some passion to but, go into clean your... But you so, were just saying what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What was wrong with it? <laughs> One said, yeah. So do we want... What do we do to make it... Sustained, be, yeah. be part of us and we sustain it. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm saying don't throw it away when we start something. And that has been part of our problems. Okay. We start something... Mm -hmm. there's a problem. Instead of sitting back and going back and reevaluating and see how we can redirect, we jettison. And that cannot but be what, done But what other alternatives were available or have been available apart from the Inobwa kind of um, approach yeah. to us to help clean our environment? Yeah, um, well, the Inobwa approach has always been good. Yes. The mineral system and all that. But yes. we find ourselves in bedroom communities, communities where you don't even know your neighbor, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and people have become more individualistic. So we rely on um, uh, these tricycles to pick our waste. That is with the communities, and how about the public areas? If it's not a, an organized public area where they take tokens to clean, who is responsible? 
Then we come to the duties of the municipality. Mm -hmm. Now, how uh, empowered are they? Exactly. Are they receiving the necessary funds to be able to clean the environment as they should be? And uh, after collecting even, what do they do with it? Because our landfills are full over the cup, our engineered landfills, and I think it's going to be decommissioned. Yes. Yes, the World Bank program, the Ga Gamma and Gaslip, is starting a new landfill. But is landfill in the way to go? This, I guess, was taken from a recycling plant. Yes. Yeah. But then you go to the Pung landfill itself. It's a mechanized landfill, but how well has it been engineered? So these are things that we looked at. We are not uh, criticizing because uh, I think government has put in a lot of investments. Maybe not uh, as expected, but they've done their bid. However, mm -hmm. introducing new things like waste treatment, uh, valorization of waste, which some uh, private actors have veered into it. You look at the investments as big. To make a change, it's a big investment. Yes. You take the IRECOP, not many in individuals can uh, do this investment. But fortunately, we have some development finance banks, which uh, companies can go get loans for these social development uh, agenda to build infrastructures, infrastructures like that. So you see, when the IRECOP was built, uh, around the uh, Lavender Hill. Lavender, yeah. You don't even, you don't, you, people have even forgotten it's called Lavender Hill because it's absorbed the mm. solid waste, uh, liquid waste that liquid, was put yes. into the sea. Directly. And now it's uh, recycling waste, plastics, and also organics to make compost. So I think the IRA Cup is uh, integrated recycling and uh, compost plant. Yeah, these are new uh, things that is uh, in the country that is available to help curb the uh, solid waste issues. But, but, but the, then the, how many are they? But how many can there be? Let's ask the question, really. I mean, the financial outlay alone for a facility like that isn't for the ordinary person or ordinary. I mean, you are a consultant, Mr. Um, Engineer Salifu, you can tell us the financial part of all of these innovations. And, and, and can we allow the country to continue on the track that it's on? We have the policies. I think we have quite a number of them. We can, we can list them when it comes to the National Solid Waste Management Strategy. We have, uh, we have quite a number of them. What is the gap that we are feeling and we are, we are living um, between the, the policies that have been nicely promulgated and then the implementation. And when I say the implementation, I mean the, the decentralized system that we have and then also the private sector that's also supposed to be partnering. Engineer, engineer would you take that? The thing is yes. that, you see, I am taking it to the point where we have... A model in court yes. to compare with. What do we want to achieve? Why are we saying that some other country has achieved this ABC? Yes. And that is why I went to that example where I'm giving. Giving, there are so many things that we can consider. Yes, we can have, you know, material recovery facilities like we've done the yes. higher cop. We can decide that, and in the plan, that is what we had that we can have to start with every regional capital, for example, having one as yes. a start. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't mean we're going to do that, but I'm mm -hmm. saying that's what we can do. Now, looking at the capital outlay, yes, you can have private sector come in. And depending on how we do the financing, yes. it can be done. All I'm saying is that the issue of collection, transport, disposal in that chain, there, there are certain aspects that you can get individual homes to, 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 to contribute. Yes. But by and large, if you don't get the, the, pop, the populace involved, how do you even raise what they have to contribute? Because clearly, if you want government only to bear everything, that also is going to be very huge. Government cannot bear it 100%. And so you have to segment 
and know which aspects that we have to collect from households. And, and engineer, um, engineer to Tony, uh, Tony Mensa. Yes. Tony Mensa is still there. I yes, mean, I think Tony to... can give us more I, of this. I, I mean, with Tony with it. <laughs> engineer Tony Mensa, uh, we want to find out: Has it also been? put in the strategy, or is there a clear understanding in the strategy that not all households can afford the collection fees that are levied on, on them for collection? And for which, if they, they are not able to afford, do we allow that to, do you allow the filth to be thrown everywhere? Mr. Mensah. Hello, yes. I'm online. Yes. yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. OK, good. Um, honestly, at the moment, our system is not being fully financed. Okay. That's why we have the gaps. Mm -hmm. The households are pay making some payment, but it needs to be clearly defined. They should know exactly how much they are supposed to pay. Yes. And then how much government is also prepared to pay. Okay. And therefore, the gap it's also supposed to be, we should be able to identify the means of financing the gap that will be that has been created. At the moment, the households are making some payment. Yes. The service provided go there, and then they pay to get the service delivered. I mean, the households pay to get the service delivered. Yes. And there are also a certain fraction of the population that ha doesn't have the means to be able to pay. So then this is supposed to be taken up by another entity, meaning the government or a section of the population that has the capacity to pay this in addition to subsidizing the, those that will not be able to pay. And these have not been clearly defined. The policy document that was developed, I must say it was developed during the MDG era, that's the Millennium Development Goals era. Okay. Now, a review or revision of the policy is underway by the Ministry of Sanitation and Water Resources. Because now we are under the Sustainable Development Goals era. And the requirements that are supposed to be met under the two different areas are different. The Sustainable Development Goals era has more stringent goals to be met. Yes. Now, it's not only by collecting a certain fraction of the waste that has been generated, but then we are talking about total collection and then also total treatment. So it is more stringent than the Millennium Development Goals era. And therefore, it needs a lot more financial resources. And then we also need more efforts to be able to handle the situation. We will continue with um, the situation of Rwanda. I've also been to Rwanda. And um, when they mention that it's a clean city, it's the cleanest in Africa. Um, they were not lying. However, I realized that the situation of Rwanda, when they talk about, like, for instance, a total ban of plastics, it's not a 100% total ban. You know, that is one. But I think what, what I find quite unique about the people and their commitment to the environmental sanitation space it's just be, it's beyond the cultural dimension. And I would want engineer to talk about it a bit because, um, you know, Rwanda has been criticized. The leadership of Rwanda has been criticized, for instance, as not being totally democratic. Is it the case that we are not able to support uh, the governments with initiatives like what you mentioned earlier to do this, or something has to be done? Because I obviously, just the, the, the policies are not enough. Well, I, I mean, maybe you need to explain much better than that. But I think that um, whether we like it or not, mobilizing people to buy into whatever government wants to do is very, very key. Yes. 
all right? That is one. I mean, making sure that what the private sector, if you decided that you give franchise out, do what it's supposed to do is another. Now, that is where maybe we're not looking at. The average, if you watched on the streets of Rwanda, if uh, a lady was cleaning a street, did you see the passion with you they cleaned? It's, it, their sense of dedication is exceptional. It can't be only monetary, uh, monetary yeah, yeah. Uh, mo so that's motivation. That's what I'm saying. Then, yeah. So then go back to the traditional core value that they had used to mobilize them. Yes. And that, that, for me, I think is what we are missing. Yes. Look, well, we did the strategy and we said materials in transition. People call it zero waste, some say yes. circular economy. I was hoping that that material in transition meant we were going to put it in a local language and beat it over time so that the average householder will realize that waste is not waste. Waste has value. So when that person is discarding the waste or anything, the yeah, mindset. You know, but we, it's not a magic fix. It ha we have to work at it. You know, we, we have to. And I'm, I always say that, look, listen, 4th, uh, is it 4th August 1974, when we decided that Ghana would move from right to left? Mm -hmm. huh? um, <laughs> they whipped it and whipped it. To the point where people were afraid if we change from right to left, there was going to be so many accidents. It didn't happen. Mm. Because I remember I was in class five or something, I had a t-shirt which said, you know, no more driving on the left. Oh. It's oh. now driving on the right. <laughs> you know, primary school kids mm -hmm. have t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is that if you want to get that passion yes. that we see there, we need to do things more than this engineering. Yes. yes okay? Yes. Transformation yes. of any organization or country, anything. We can have all the technology, but that missing thing which has to do with the people, if it is not there, my dear, then we better yes, throw money it. at it. Yes. But we don't have the money. Well, yeah. where would the development partners come in this? Apart from prioritizing the environmental sanitation issues, are we, I know some focus on education, but what kind of education are we looking at? Because the kind of education we are talking about here is not the formal, just the formal education that we are talking about. You want a certain sense of responsibility Mindset. by the people, a certain passion. I mean, what are the, what, what are the direction for the development partners in this? Well, for the development partners, they look at best practices from okay. their end and uh, try to integrate it in our system. But um, circular economy or mint trans, uh, materials in transition isn't new, isn't foreign to us. I remember growing up, I mean, there's always a dugout somewhere where we put our organics in. Yeah, but unfortunately, people are moving into the city with uh, concrete areas mm -hmm. where they can do their gardening and reuse their uh, organic waste. So it all goes into our waste stream and it becomes filthier and filthier. And now we use more plastics. Things from the 90s, plastics have become more and more. So you see it across. So the EU, the EU partners and other development partners are talking about circular economy, sustainable way of managing our waste, closing the loop. That means if we use uh, something we should be able to reuse it yes. several times or put value on it to do something else. So uh, for plastics, what next can you do with it? Some organizations, for instance, in the Netherlands, we have the plastic wheels, which reuses um, PET to make sofas and nice things. Uh, they've tried to in, uh, mainstream it in uh, sectors, but then sometimes the products that comes out is not refined. And they are making more and more efforts, putting out subsidy instruments to support uh, mm -hmm. the youth and uh, local entrepreneurs to get into that business. However, that aside, that is one leg of it. Enforcement of the law is exactly. also critical because um, to 
valorize waste, you need to separate them. Yes. To make valorization more efficient. So that is, uh, that is the step where governments should come in strongly with law enforcement. Um, uh, waste segregation is very important to deal with this mess. We really need to focus on that. But, but back to the same educational thing. Um, one of our episodes talked about waste segregation. But even to the average person, to the average human citizen of Ghana, <coughs> what is waste segregation to us? And then if you should make the effort at waste segregation, even, yes. uh, what's the reward? Sometimes you may even put them in the different kinds of bags. Some um, a guest shared an experience. And, and she says, at the end of the day, they come and they want to just collect everything all together. Mm -hmm. So what is the point of making you know, that effort? But if we, we, I want us to go back to the Rwanda situation. I remember asking one Rwandan an interesting question, where I said, so because the one, somebody said that if they saw a colleague drop something on the floor, they would arrest the person. I said, a citizen's arrest? They said, yes. Hmm? And I said, really? That would be interesting in Ghana. To go to a policeman holding somebody's hand or dragging somebody along to say, this man just dropped a, um, a bin, um, a rubber something yeah. on the floor. So I've arrested this person and I brought them to the police station. I want us to play that kind of scenario out. Does that mean that when we were coming up with these strategies, we didn't think about the capacity, first of all, of our law enforcement agencies? Mr. Mensa. If you are there, could you take this up for us first? Yes, I'm here. Yes. Did the strategies forget about law enforcement? Yes, law enforcement is effective in Rwanda, that's um, specifically Kigali, which is the capital. Um, somehow, the background of that country also plays a role. Yes. They were under military regime and it was easier to enforce laws. Uh, at the moment, we are a democratic state, <laughs> so we have some challenges. Nevertheless, once we start and the results are beginning to show, then people become more interested and everybody will buy into it and then we'll be able to ensure effective enforcement of, of our laws. So that's not to say that because we are a democratic state, or we have been a democratic state for some time, we don't have any business implementing or ensuring that people follow our laws or the police follow our laws. We have to make effort. And that rests with the municipalities. In recent times, I think there's been some improvement, especially if you talk of Accra with the regional minister stepping in to whip in goods, the municipalities. Some improvements are coming. That is not to say that those that are outside of Accra are sleeping. We need to encourage or to ensure so that the municipalities will do a lot of um, effective monitoring to ensure that the laws are followed through. Rwanda is doing very well because of where they are coming from. They have been in war for some time. The president himself is directly involved. I remember when I went there uh, some years back, we asked why their laws are being followed. And one of the answers they gave was that in some cases, if you flout any law, you could be reported to the president himself and you'll be <laughs> brought to book or you'll be brought before the president to answer why. So people are afraid for not following the laws. And I think that we need effective supervision at all levels not necessarily reporting everything to a president, but they wouldn't have the time yeah. to be able to do that. But if we look at the hierarchy and at each level, those that are responsible live up to expectation in terms of ensuring that those under them 
follow the laws to the letter. I think we need something like that. Thank you very much. Um, we'll go for a quick break. When we get back, perhaps we'll talk a little bit about the, pres the president's uh, interest in making Accra the cleaner city in Africa. And we'll have our closing remarks. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We've, we've had very interesting um, discussions in studio today um, about solid waste, solid waste management, and policy surrounding solid waste. Um, we are going to go to, I think, ladies first, Mrs. Arthur. Mrs. Arthur from the Netherlands Embassy is going to give her, us her closing remarks on the subject at hand. Yeah, so um, Ghana has done well in recognizing the situation and also uh, opening up uh, doors for innovation and also um, trying to um, review the, its policies, ETC. So um, law enforcement, I would say number one, should be a step forward going ahead because the dynamics are changing because of urbanization. Uh, secondly, uh, we should also educate capacity building from the lowest level, that's from the schools, education is key. Uh, talk about uh, climate mitigation and also secularity. You know, it should be ingrained in us going forward. We know behavioral change takes time, so it's something we should focus on. And uh, thirdly, we should also uh, try to follow on or champion, support the course in which the government has positioned itself. So, for instance, the president's greening the Ghana Day, we should, be participate. we should all participate. Another initiative is uh, green, greening Ghana, plant, tree planting and all that. It's also supports in climate mitigation. And there are a whole lot about uh, climate mitigation and adaptation, which we should also bear in mind. Uh, one other thing is financing. The private sector has done well in uh, venturing into the sector. But it's quite an expensive sector. So uh, waste management companies face a whole lot of challenges when it comes to collecting. For uh, materials in transition, there are points at which they can dispose. But collecting is a challenge. And that is where filth builds up in our community. So they face uh, challenge, uh, challenges from um, being paid by individual households. So if attention could be there, so we support, or maybe government supports in collecting these revenues from them to make their work more efficient. Uh, some kind of model should be arrived at, apart from what we are currently experience. I think that's Yes, to support to the waste yes. management company. That's because uh, from the COVID time, most of them are in serious debt. Yes. And if they stop working, we'll be living in filth. Well, we don't, we don't want that to be happening. Um, I want to move to engineer Tony Mensa to give his closing remarks on that, on, on the subject. Thank you very much. Uh, Ghana hasn't done badly, though a lot of problems are, problems are still lingering on. Um, there was a study that was undertaken by some of the development partners, I think in 2015, um, there was a publication that said Ghana is the among the seventh dirtiest in the world. countries in the world. Yes, yes. Very unfortunate. Oh, yeah. the, isn't it? Seven. Very, very unfortunate. That's the wrong. That's the wrong. But if you look at that time and now, there has been a lot of improvement. Because that time, Lavender Hill was there, which that, is, that was human waste, was being dumped directly into the sea yes. at Lavender Hill. If you go there now, the situation has changed entirely. There is no Lavender Hill now. Yes. We have um, waste treatment facilities located there. 
one is a sewage, sewage treatment plant, and then also another one is a fecal sludge treatment plant. So that era is no more. If you look at waste management, earlier on, there were lots of dump sites spotted ac across the cities. Now, in Accra, we have integrated uh, recycling and compost plant. If you go to Masi, there's another one there through public-private initiative. Yeah. So we have come a long way. Nevertheless, we need to answer or respond to the question of financing. Yes. So government should do well to identify, or let me say the municipalities need to do well to identify sources of getting funds to subsidize so that the burden on the beneficiaries will go down and then also the burden on the service providers will also uh, be minimized. Then we'll be able to sustain what we've been able to uh, attain over the years and then improve going forward. Thank you. Thank you very much, Engineer. Um, last but not least, Engineer Lukman Salifu. Please give us your closing remarks on the situation. This subject is so broad, we can't exhaust everything today. I agree with you. <laughs> I think that we've just scratched yes. the surface. because, But I still maintain that um, awareness raising, behavioral change, is very central to any, even for organizations, any transformational change that we want. We need to define and get a theme that would carry all the population along with us. Yes. We've done, as you know, Tony said, as uh, Janet, as you said, look, we've come a long way. And I think that we've done quite well. It is sometimes, as I said, when we try a few things and we have bottlenecks, we should just sit back, go back to the drawing table, look at it, and see what we can do Better because to dipping it, you need time. Yes. And we should always not expect that you start something and then you just get the results. Yeah. How we come back and remedy and go on is important. Right. Now, that is linked also to capacity building. Look, when we say leadership in waste management, who are they? I want to throw that question. Maybe we start with you think about that next time. Who yes, are the sir. leaders? Mm -hmm. For me, the basic environmental health officer who sits in the municipal or metropolitan or district assembly, at that level is the leader. Now, we have leadership at various levels. But that leadership down there, I must say the capacity is weak. Okay, for a long time, the environmental health officers did not have even, you know, a scheme of service. Now that we've got a scheme of service for them, we need to look at how we're going to build their capacity along that scheme of service yes. over time. Because those, your frontline leaders, if the capacity is weak, how are you going to How do anything? Yeah. So yes, I will agree we need to improve strategy. To add to it, financing is very important. Yes. You know, we've done work to look at financing gaps. We need to revisit it, yes. look at it, and then allocate which or what all the stakeholders need to pay, and then the gap. Yes. Then we think about how we, we finance that gap. If it's government, yes. If we have to do cross-subsidization, yes. The policy does not say everybody should pay. The policy actually allows cross-subsidization. Thank you very much, Engineer Lukman Salifu. Wonderful submissions by my panel today. Engineer Lukman Salifu is with Waste Care Associates. He does consultation. He seems to be known, or popular, in the space of policy and waste environmental sanitation. Uh, Madame Jeanette Arthur is with the Netherlands Embassy, and she's worked on WASH projects in the past. And then we have um, Engineer... Tony Mensa, now retired, but he was with the um, Ministry of Sanitation. I want to say a big thank you to you. We definitely will call on your expertise the next time. As we mentioned earlier, this is just scratching the surface of the, a bigger problem, and we must come back to the table. Until the next time, I wish you well. Thank you. <laughs>